I would like for you to take the Word of God, please, and turn with me in the New Testament book of Ephesians to Ephesians chapter 2. And we'll begin reading in just a moment in Ephesians chapter 2 with verse 8. The thought of seeing Jesus nearly takes your breath, doesn't it? <laughs> we're thinking someday that we're going to have that ultimate discovery of him, see him face to face. The Word of God talks about that. But the greatest thing I've missed in this life, even in this journey as a Christian, is knowing the Lord like I ought to know him. I don't know how you think about that. But I think after all these years as a believer, I should have come to know Jesus better than I know him. And as we're traveling through this book of Ephesians, I think we're reminded of this. And so may God help us as we think upon it. If you have your Bible open in Ephesians chapter 2, beginning with verse 8, the Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. If you're in the habit of marking things in your Bible, I want you to mark this expression. And I hope by God's grace to call attention to the things that God intends for us to give attention to from this expression. It's found in the 10th verse. The Bible says created in Christ Jesus. Created in Christ Jesus. If you're a believer, if you know the Lord Jesus as your Savior, God is speaking of you here. Remember these words were penned by the Apostle Paul, but given him to pen, given to him to pen as God moved him along. And so we have God's word on this matter. The word of God created in Christ Jesus. I want you to hold your place here and go with me to the story of creation as it begins in Genesis chapter one, if you'll turn with me, please. Once you get to this first verse in the Bible and believe it with all of your heart, you won't have any trouble with anything else in the word of God. That he is the creator God. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Now this is a declaration. God makes no attempt to prove himself or to prove his existence. He declares that he exists and declares that he is the creator God. We could say that this is a summary statement concerning creation and then some detail is given after God makes this declaration in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. But we all understand, more than we know to explain, we all understand that the creator God has created this world and in this created world he declares himself. He speaks to us through creation. Now remember the expression we found in Ephesians chapter 2. And verse 10, that we are created in Christ Jesus. And I want you to give thought to this idea of creation as it relates to the creative act of God in creating this world and the creative act God performed in creating us in Christ Jesus. We shall never discover everything that God has created in this world that he spoke into existence. We will never discover it. Not all of it. As a matter of fact, scientists who believe, I mean those who have faith in God, giving God the glory, and by the way, that's, that's the reason I think that lies at the root of those who do not believe in God. They are jealous of God's glory. They want the glory. But for those who know the Lord and make these discoveries concerning our universe, they never cease to be amazed at what they discover of the vastness and greatness of our God and his creation. I think the same thing about our Christian life. We are created in Christ Jesus. And as we discover more and more of our Lord and what he has done when he's given us so great salvation, you think what we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, may God help us. Turn with me to the Psalms just for a moment. In Psalm 19, 
The Bible declares in verse 1 of Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God. I want you to have that fixed in your mind. The heavens declare the glory of God and the earth showeth his handiwork. It speaks, the heavens speak, the earth speak. Day unto day uttereth speech and night unto night showeth knowledge. God has made himself known in creation and in conscience. God reveals himself. There's enough of the knowledge of God to condemn the human race in the fact that there's a God who lives and a God who created this world. He declares his reality and declares that he's the creator of God as we behold his creation. Again, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day utter speech and night unto night showeth knowledge. If his creative act in this universe makes his declaration, if day unto day and night unto night speech is uttered concerning God, then what about our lives, our creative existence? I mean by that we are created in Christ Jesus. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. He's a new creation. If you feel overwhelmed at times when you stop somewhere and look across these beautiful vistas that God has made, you stand on a, a mountainside and look across a valley or in our particular location of the world at this time with these beautiful red maple trees and all these things God has done. I'm told by artists if you took green and tried to change green uh, to red, you can't do it. But God does a great job of doing it, doesn't he? And he declares himself. And we, we stand in awe with these discoveries. I remember going with uh, one of my sons to Yosemite years ago and standing there and just looking around, beholding what God has done. Or even better, and I mean better, stand in our great Smoky Mountains here and look at what God has done. More variation in vegetation and all of Europe combined just in our great Smoky Mountains. Think of that. And when God begins to array it with all these beautiful colors, we think, what a creation God has created. But I want to tell you something. As we behold the Lord's work in our lives, he wants us to see that he has created us in Christ Jesus. Let's go back to the New Testament just for a moment, to the book of Colossians. And our, our discoveries should be unending. So often as I've studied the life of Charles Spurgeon, I've made statements concerning his life. For example, I've said he never had a well day from age 43 till the day he died at age 57. He was a sickly man. But what did he discover in his illness? There's such a depth to all of that. Did he discover what the Bible says about Christ's strength being made perfect in our weakness? Why does God allow things in our lives why are you and I going through what we go through at this moment? Why has God designed life with an aging process? We talk a lot about death and how to die and being ready to meet God, but what about the aging process? As we're withering, is God blossoming and growing in our lives? What are we discovering about the Lord Jesus Christ? I believe in Mr. Spurgeon was well aware of his weaknesses, sometimes even having to be helped to the pulpit with one man under one arm and one on the other just to get there. And he didn't even use a pulpit. He used a little desk to the left, but just to help him to the rail. They were seeing something that perhaps visibly they saw, but they couldn't see what was really going on. As he was weakening, God was strengthening him. And he was discovering more of what God created in Christ Jesus in his life. Let me show you something, Colossians. In Colossians chapter 2, of course, this book, all of this book of the Bible is about, about God. But here in particular, we're looking at the person of Jesus Christ, co-equal, co-existent, eternally existent with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. But look what God says of him in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 3. Speaking of our Lord Jesus in whom are hid all 
the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. God didn't hide them in some deceptive act so that we might never find them. God placed them. They're in Christ so that they will be discovered. So how does God work in our lives? What does God do for us in spirit, soul, and body? How does God deal with us circumstantially so that the end result would be that we're moved to make greater discoveries concerning the fact that we've been created in Christ Jesus? I believe that was on the Apostle Paul's heart as he penned these words and that's a large part of God's intent as we're giving this book of Ephesians. If you'll turn back there, please. We ought to discover more and more of the wisdom and the knowledge that is in Christ Jesus because all wisdom and all knowledge, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are in him. In Ephesians chapter 2, Beginning with this eighth verse, I want us to look at the gift of God. The gift of God. The Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. The gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. There's a good bit of discussion about the antecedents in this verse. Look at it, please. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It, what is it? It is the gift of God. Well, what is he summarizing here? This is a summary statement given to us in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. Most people who've served the Lord and tried to do anything in God's work have memorized these verses. And we memorize these verses because they summarize salvation. They summarize the gospel. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works as any man should boast. So what is this gift? It is salvation. It's salvation. This gift of God is salvation. And God tells us it comes by his grace through faith. Plus nothing, minus nothing. Do you know if we could earn it, we'd brag about earning it. If we deserved it, we'd brag about deserving it. But we cannot earn it and we do not deserve it. It's the gift of God. Lest any man should boast. It is the gift of God. And just as we can try to think and ponder and meditate upon the creative act of God making this world, forming this universe, which no man can really measure, this limitless span that telescopes try to comprehend and the strongest of them cannot bring it all into view. As God looks at us as his creation in Christ Jesus with this gift of salvation, we will never discover everything God has given us in Christ. But we have this wonderful salvation, the gift of God. For by grace you are saved through faith. Notice in verse 6 of the same chapter, we dealt with it earlier. We come from verses 5 to 6. And even when we were dead in trespasses and sins, you see, dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. And then this parenthesis, by grace you are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And then God goes a bit further here as Paul pens these words we've just read in verse 8. For by grace are you saved. We found that at the closing part of verse 5. Through faith. Through faith. This is the channel through which God works. Looking unto Jesus. Faith is described in Hebrews chapter 11 as the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. But the great definition of faith is in Hebrews chapter 12. It's given simply in Hebrews chapter 12. Looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. The author and finisher of our faith. Looking unto Jesus. That's faith defined. Looking unto Jesus. So by the grace of God we are saved 
as we look unto Jesus. Looking away, looking unto Jesus. Looking unto Jesus. There was a day when someone explained the gospel to me. I understood that Christ died for my sin. That the Son of God came in this world, born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, died on the cross, was buried and rose from the dead. Ascended on high, ever liveth to make intercession for us. Sent the Holy Spirit to deal with me in this world. And someone explained that to me and I looked to Jesus. And he saved me. Now I can't explain all of that. I can't give you every detail of what God did in saving me. But I know he saved me. I discovered that all my sins were forgiven. I discovered that I have access with God. I discovered that my name is written in heaven. I discovered that I can never be lost. I discovered that he'd prepared a mansion for me. I didn't know all of that when I first came to the Lord, but I'm making all these discoveries and so many more since I've been created in Christ Jesus. I have a little book. It's not so little, but it has a list in it of a thousand places you should see before you die. It's very interesting. I doubt anybody's going to try to see them all, but it's interesting. They're a place of beauty and renown. And I've thought so many times about what Evelyn and I have been privileged to see and where we've been privileged to go. We just got back from El Paso, Texas. And I thought we'd landed on the moon when we first got there, if you've ever been out there. Hardly a green thing to look at. But such wonderful, kind people. And we enjoyed it. It was a great discovery. And as I think of places I've been and things I've seen and had the opportunity with my own eyes to behold these things, we live in a beautiful world. God created a beautiful world. And as I ponder those things, I think how many things in my Christian life created in Christ Jesus with this gift of God have I yet to see and discover? This entire journey as a Christian, from the day I asked God to forgive my sin and by faith came to know Christ as Savior, from that moment to this, it's been an unending discovery of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done in his creative act, being created in Christ Jesus as a new creature. How about you? We have a wonderful Savior, don't we? It's not about learning things, it's about knowing him. And so we looked at the gift of God. The second thing I want you to consider with me, please, is the good works. The good works. Listen to this verse, verse 10. For we are his workmanship. I'm standing behind a pulpit. It was designed for me to preach from. I had some input in the design. Mr. Fox Help me to get all of it carried out. There were certain things I wanted, a certain size I wanted it to be, a certain height I wanted it to be. And we found a man who could do this kind of workmanship. I wanted it to be unique. By that I mean that I wanted it to be one of a kind. Maybe there's a little pride in that, I don't know, but I wanted it to be one of a kind. And we have so many people come here and speak that when we take their picture and see that picture again, you know they were speaking from behind this pulpit and no other in that photograph because of the uniqueness of the workmanship in this pulpit. May I tell you that God has done a unique work in your life if he saved you. Now, how can that be? Well, you know, they say, I don't know, but they say that every snowflake has its own unique print. No two are alike, but they're all snowflakes. And we declare that we are Christians. We've asked God to forgive our sins and by faith trust him as Savior. If you're really born again, that's happened in your life. But at the same time, though you say you're a child of God, you're new, unique. Your fingerprint, you see, as a human being, is not like any other fingerprint in the world. Can you imagine such a thing? And I want to tell you, when you were created in Christ Jesus, the workmanship God did on you is unique to you 
That's how much he loves you and cares about you. You are unique and precious, and I am unique and precious to my God. Amen. And I praise him for it. Amen. The thing that troubles me most about my life is that I'm going to get to the end of my journey without discovering everything God had for me. And what God has for me is in Christ. Amen. May I say that again? What God has for me is in Christ. What God has for my marriage is in Christ. What God has for this ministry for me is in Christ. What God has for your special unique calling, whatever it may be, is in Christ. And the better I know Christ and the more I discover Christ, the better acquainted I'm going to be with what God has uniquely for me. Because all those treasures of wisdom and knowledge are in him. They're in him. We were his workmanship. I just want to pause and say thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I don't know how he ever did anything good with any of us. I really don't. But I praise him for every good thing he's done. And I want you to notice, please, that the evidence of his workmanship is to be lived out in our works. Somewhere you ought to remember that. The evidence of our workmanship, his workmanship in our lives, should be lived out in our good works. Let me show you a Bible example before we come back here. You know, the way to interpret Scripture is with Scripture. God gives light on his word. From his word, he helps us understand. So hold your place here and turn with me, please. Let's start with the gospel according to Matthew, if you have your Bible open there. The Lord Jesus is speaking to his own here in Matthew chapter 5. And we're talking about good works. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, beginning with verse 13, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt had lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? Is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of man. Ye are the light of the world. Notice, notice God doesn't just throw these things out with, without significance. Ye are the salt of the earth. Ye are the light of the world. Two different spheres here, the earth and the world. Ye are. What, what we do is because of who we are. What we're able to do is because of who we are. We have been created in Christ Jesus. Because we've been created in Christ Jesus, we're able to do what God wants done in Christ Jesus. This is very important. We are created in Christ Jesus. And as we're created in Christ Jesus, we're able to do the things God wants us to do through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And the Bible says, Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Alexander McLaren said, If you put a candle under a bushel, the bushel either put the candle out or the candle either burn the bushel. Interesting thought. Verse 16, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. What's the reason for your shining light? You're the light of the world. We are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. What, what, what's the reason for this? Let your light so shine before men. In other words, be who you are in Christ. Live the Christian life. Follow the Lord Jesus. Truly live the Christian life. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And as they do, notice please, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Do you know why the Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God? Because it is the gift of God. Do you know why it goes on to say, not of works, lest any man should boast? In other words, the reason it says not of works is lest any man should boast. We don't take the glory. No flesh is to glory in his presence. God gets all the glory. 
And the Bible says the same thing here. In living the Christian life, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. God should get the glory from the life we live. Turn with me please to the gospel according to John. We're going to work our way back to Ephesians chapter 2. But in John chapter 10, there's a tremendous discussion going on here in John chapter 10. And we'll take up the discussion with verse 22. It was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Now can you imagine? Here he is on Solomon's porch in this area of the Temple Mount, and they come to him and say, we want to know, we want to know now, are you the Christ? Now, how is he going to answer this question? How is God going to answer this question? Imagine I say to you, now listen carefully, I want to know now, are you a Christian? Are you really a Christian? I want you to tell me now. Are you a Christian? How are you going to answer that question? Now with that in mind, let me read on. John chapter 10, verse 25. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not, the works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. Verse 27, John 10. My sheep, and notice my sheep, that's a great assurance. Hear my voice, that's a great assurance. And I know them, that's a great assurance. And they follow me, that's a great assurance. Look what all is in that one verse. They're mine, they hear my voice, I know them, they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. It is the gift of God. It is the gift of God, lest any man should boast. I give unto them eternal life. That's salvation. And they shall never perish. You're never going to go to hell. If one child of God could go to hell, all God's children have to live in fear. But not one of God's children can be lost. And so none of them ever has to live in fear of perishing. We're saved by the grace of God through faith and we're kept by the same Savior who saved us. Praise his holy name. My Father which gave them me is greater than all and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Now that disturbed them. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. They know he made a claim of deity here. And so they took up stones to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of those works do you stone me? The Jews answered him saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, ye are gods? If you called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father hath sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemous, because I said, I am the Son of God. If I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. Did you hear that? He's answering their question. If I don't do the Father's works, there's no reason for you to believe me. But if I do, may I add the Father's works, though you believe not me, believe the works that you may know and believe that the Father's in me and I in him. Now let's go back to Ephesians chapter 2. 
How do we demonstrate the Christian life? I want to know now, are you a Christian? I want to know. I want to know, is my wife a Christian? I want to know. She wants to know, am I a Christian? Are you a Christian? Is this a Christian couple? Both of you know the Lord. Are you Christians? Are you a Christian? How will the world know? So let's read it. Verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. The reason the world can know that we're saved is not by what we say, but by how we live. Now we ought to say the truth, but the great evidence that we're Christians, that we've been created, born again, we have new life in Christ. The reason the world ought to believe that is if we're doing the works that give, give that evidence to an unbelieving world. Would you turn back quickly to the book of Galatians? Chapter 5, verse 6. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. This is Ephesians 5, 6, 16. Verse 17, Ephesians 5. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to another so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Verse 18 of, of, of Galatians chapter 5. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh, now these are not good works, these are the opposite. The works of the flesh which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you, I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But... Verse 22 of Galatians chapter 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is, may we read this out loud? May we read this out loud after the word is? Let's read it together. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. How do we prove that we've been created in Christ Jesus by having these inward, manward, Godward things. Notice, please, if our lives demonstrate love, joy, and peace, does my life, let me talk to me, my life demonstrate love, joy, and peace? Oh, I want to be a Christian. And I, I want to honor Christ by being a Christian. If I say I want people to know I'm a Christian, I want people to know I'm a Christian because I want to be a, a good display of his workmanship. Let me ask you something. Are some of us sorry displays of his workmanship, though we claim to be his workmanship? Do you realize how serious a matter it is to say you're a Christian and give such a bad reputation of God's workmanship? I hear all this stuff all the time from people. Oh, yeah, I've been saved. And they could go on and say, but I live like the devil now. Do you realize what you're saying about his workmanship? The most serious thing, listen to me, the most serious thing about me saying I'm a Christian is not saying I'm a Christian so I'm going to go to heaven and miss hell. The most serious thing about me saying I'm a Christian is whether or not I bring glory to God or I don't bring glory to God. I, I think we, we miss it sometimes just talking to people, even in soul winning experiences. And I hope you hear this with your heart. I think we miss it sometimes talking to people in soul winning experiences about what now what you're going to get out of this, what you're going to get out of this, you're going to get, you're going to get heaven out of this, you're not going to go to hell. And that's certainly the truth. And I thank God that people can be moved by fear and trust God and miss hell and go to heaven. 
But do they ever get the idea that what we come to Christ to do, created in Christ Jesus, is to bring glory to the God who created us in Christ Jesus, to show the wonderful change in my life since Jesus came in? And what it ought to show is love, joy, and peace. How about when I, how about when I deal with others? It ought to show long-suffering and gentleness and goodness. What about my attitude as I look to God? There ought to be faith and meekness and temperance. Against such there is no law. Now let me read the passage again. Just listen carefully. God has really dealt with my heart about this. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Oh, I know what they say sometimes. They say, oh, you people at that Temple Baptist Church, you, 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 you preach a certain way, you talk to people about living a certain way. I hope they mean by this that all we're doing is saying, this is what God says his children are and because of what they are, this is how his children should behave. And I want God to give me the strength, the grace, the wisdom to agree with God and to live the Christian life. Let's pray together, may we? I want you to sit quietly and let's pray. Let's genuinely pray together. Our Father, we thank thee for thy word and for the penetrating power of thy word to get into us, to stir us, to help us, to enable us to see ourselves, to see thee, to see thy divine intent. And this is how we pray. Help us as we continue to look to thee, Lord Jesus, our great Savior. Help us as we continue to discover what we have as we've been created in thee. And may we do the works, the good works that testify and give evidence that we are truly thy children. Help us now, feeble and frail as we are. Strengthen us. May we find all we need is in thee because we know it is. May we look to no other in the precious name of Jesus Christ. While we're sitting very quietly and our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed, I wonder if there's some sincere people here who would say, I just know I'm not near living up to the Christian life that God has saved me to live.